protection of the electric power system varies with the objective of the protection. Where the electric power system is under the supervision and control of the electric utility, system protection strives to limit damage to the installed system, yet provide minimum service interruption. Where the electric power system is on the user's side of the service connection, the NEC, National Electric Code, NFPA 70, requires protection against fire hazards and electric shock. In each of these cases, the common theme is detection and isolation of a faulted circuit. In this module, you'll learn the difference between fault currents, short circuits, and arcing faults. How to perform the calculations that determine the available short circuit current in a power distribution system. Understand the wave shape of fault currents. And finally, you'll review the importance of the X over R ratio in evaluating short circuit currents. You'll control the pace of this module by using the navigation buttons at the bottom. At the end of the module, there will be a short quiz to test your comprehension. Detection and isolation of system fault currents is generally achieved with circuit breakers or current limiting fuses. The term fault is often used interchangeably with short circuit. While a short circuit is a fault, not all faults are short circuits. In general, a short circuit is an unintentional hard connection between an ungrounded conductor and another ungrounded conductor or grounded conductor. Current will also flow between conductors of differing potential through an arc. The arcing fault can occur between phases and between phase and ground. Arcing fault current is considerably less than the bolted fault value. The reduction is due to a lower voltage applied to the circuit due to the voltage drop across the arc. The voltage drop across an arc in free air is 100 VRMS. Current flow in a line to ground arcing fault in a 480, 277, three phase, four wire AC system is estimated to be 20% of the bolted fault value. Overloads will be ignored in this discussion because all electrical switching devices are capable of conducting overload currents long enough for overload protective devices to disconnect the overloaded circuit. Properly applied overload protection will cause circuit interruption before the thermal rating of the conductors is reached. NEC Article 240 establishes the criteria for the selection and location of overcurrent protective devices. In essence, the code requires that the overcurrent protection be located at the point where the conductor receives its source and be suitable for the size, type, and installation technique for the conductor. The current ratings of conductors are given in Article 310. Article 240 also requires that the overcurrent protective device be capable of safely interrupting available short circuit current at its load terminals and anywhere downstream of the device. The value of the short circuit current at any point in a circuit is a function of the size of the conductors, the distance from the source to the short circuit, and the current available from the source. Except where the service to facility is limited by the utility infrastructure, when the service is a dedicated transformer, a conservative estimate of fault current on the secondary of the transformer can be made by assuming an unlimited available KVA at the primary of the transformer. In the circuit shown here, the service is through a dedicated transformer. The short circuit, or fault, current available at F1 will be limited by the impedance of the transformer and the conductors to the point of the fault. The fault current available at the secondary terminals of a transformer, assuming an unlimited source at the primary terminals, can be calculated by dividing the rated secondary current by the percent impedance. For a 2000 kVA 5.5% impedance transformer, rated current is approximately 2400 amps. The fault current at the transformer terminals would therefore be 2400 divided by 0 
equals 43.6 kiloamps symmetrical. The fault current available at F2 is further reduced by the impedance of the additional conductors. The plot shown here illustrates the limiting effects of transformer and conductor impedance. Given a 2000 kVA 5.5% impedance transformer, secondary voltage of 480 volts and 500,000 kVA available at the primary of the transformer, fault current at 200 circuit feet for four 750 kC mil per phase conductors is approximately 38 kA symmetrical. If the conductors are 1 250 kC mil per phase, the fault current at 200 circuit feet is approximately 15 kA. Total short circuit current at a fault is the sum of that available from the source and the current contributed by the load. The load contribution comes from running motors as the motors become generators in this case. Motor load contribution to a fault is estimated to be four times the full load running current of the motor. It is common practice to assume that 50% of the load is motor load on 208 120 volt systems and 100% for 240 and 480 volt systems. The percent contribution refers to the current rating of the transformer. Given a 2000 kVA transformer, Rated current is approximately 2.8 times 2000 equals 5.6 kA in a 208 volt system and 1.2 times 2000 equals 2.4 kA in a 480 volt system. Consequently, the source contribution through the transformer is assumed to be 4 times 5.6 times 50% equals 11.2 kA in a 208 volt system and 4 times 2.4 times 100% equals 9.6 kA in a 480 volt system. Where the actual motor load is known, it can be used in this calculation. Therefore, the total short circuit current at F3 is the sum of the source fault current calculated earlier to be 43.6 kA plus the motor fault current contribution of 9.6 kA which yields a total short circuit current of 53.2 kA in a 480 volt system. For services derived from area and spot networks, the available fault current at the service should be obtained from the serving utility company. Keep in mind that motor load contribution must be added to this value. For area and spot network services, the available fault current can exceed 100 kiloamps. In these cases, it is common practice to apply current limiting over current protective devices. These devices can be circuit breakers when the rated current is 400 amps or less current technology. For circuits rated more than 400 amps, current limiting fuses are used. The common practice is to use fuse circuit breakers. Selective coordination can be achieved using the flexibility of adjustable trips on circuit breakers or the proper selection of fuses. When the combination of fuse and breaker are used, the fuse is typically rated at two or more times the breaker frame rating. Thus, its rupture point is above the breaker trip value for all but the most severe faults. For current limiting fuses, they become limiting at about 30 times their continuous rating. In determining the maximum value of fault current which can occur at some point in a system, it should be noted that the fault current wave is not symmetrical about the zero current access for several cycles after the fault occurs. This asymmetrical fault current wave is composed of two components, the symmetrical fault current and a direct current component whose magnitude is determined by the point on the voltage wave at which the fault occurred. The magnitude of the direct current component can vary from zero to a maximum equal to the peak of the symmetrical alternating current component. The initial magnitude of the direct current component is equal to the value of the alternating current symmetrical component at the instant the fault occurs. At any instant after the fault, the magnitude of the total asymmetrical current is equal to the algebraic sum of the symmetrical alternating current an exponentially decaying direct current component. 
in a theoretical system with zero resistance, the direct current component of fault current would remain a constant value. However, in an actual system where resistance is present, the direct current component decays to zero as the stored energy it represents is expanded in the form of I squared R heat loss in the resistance of the system. The rate of decay of the direct current component is exponential and is a function of the reactance to resistance ratio, X over R, of the system from source to fault. The lower the X over R ratio, the more rapid is the decay of the direct current component. The effect of this decay is that the fault current changes from an asymmetrical current with respect to the zero voltage axis within a few cycles of time. This graph shows the multiplying factors to determine RMS and peak currents for various X over R ratios. The X over R ratio is the tangent of the power factor phase angle. Referring to the original example of a 2000 kVA 5.5% impedance transformer with a rated current of 2400 amps, the available fault current was calculated as 43.6 kiloamps RMS symmetrical. At an X over R ratio of approximately 6.6, .6, the asymmetrical current of 57.98 kiloamps is obtained by using a multiplier of 1.3 times the symmetrical current and the instantaneous peak current of 100 kiloamps is obtained by using a multiplier of 2.3 times the symmetrical current. Fault currents impose two stresses on electric power systems. The first is thermal. The thermal effects cause heating of the conductors in the system. They are the result of the square of the current and the length of time that the current flows. The second stress is magnetic. This is also a function of the square of the current. It results in forces that tend to force parallel conductors apart for currents flowing in opposite directions and pull conductors together for currents flowing in the same direction. In some cases, the magnetic forces can be an advantage. For example, when they are used in accelerating contact separation for fault interruption in circuit breakers. Electrical equipment not intended to interrupt fault current must withstand the magnetic forces until the circuit is interrupted. Therefore, their contact structures are usually designed to use magnetic or mechanical forces to increase contact pressure during faults, allowing the protective device, such as a circuit breaker, to sacrifice itself in clearing the fault. Typically, this equipment would include power transfer switches which have withstand current ratings qualified to UL1008 transfer switch equipment standards. The obvious concern for determining the various fault values at points throughout the building distribution system is to determine the required interrupting rating of the overcurrent protective devices. It is generally not problematic to interrupt overload current but it can be dangerous to apply an underrated interrupting device in a power system that will not clear asymmetrical fault currents. The result of such an error can be damaged equipment and personal injury.